Hello, welcome to part 30 of Clinical Physiotherapy MCQ series. Here, we will be discussing day-to-day -day clinical scenarios with detailed explanation. Let's move to question number 146. Your examination reveals muscle spasms of the deep hip rotators, which are compressing the sciatic nerve and producing pain in the posterior hip region. The most effective setting of ultrasound in case is Option A 1 MHz continuous at 1 watts per centimeter square. Option B 1 MHz pulse at 1 watts per centimeter square. Option C 3 MHz continuous at 1 watts per centimeter square. Option D 3 MHz pulse at 1 watts per centimeter square. And the answer is Option A 1 MHz continuous at 1 watts per centimeter square. Explanation to this question is 1 MHz of the continuous ultrasound provides deep heating to the depth of 3 to 5 cm. At this frequency, alternation that is absorption is less in superficial tissue. This allows more energy to be absorbed, thus more heat production in the deeper tissue layer. Continuous ultrasound is applied to achieve thermal effects that is in chronic pain and pulsed ultrasound is used when no thermal effects are desired that is acute soft tissue injuries. Now let's move to question number 147. A physical therapist is working in an outpatient orthopedic clinic. During the patient history, the patient reports, I tore three of my four rotator muscles in the past. Which of the following muscles cannot be considered as possibly being torn? Option A, T is minor. Option B, T is major. Option C, supraspinators. Option D, infraspinators. And the answer is Option B, T is major. Explanation to this question is T is minor, infraspinators, supraspinators, and subscapular is made up of rotator curves. Now let's move to question number 148. A physical therapist evaluates a patient with back pain and determines that the patient plus plantus is contributing to this pain. Which of the following orthopedic intervention is most appropriate for the patient? Option A. Metatarsal pad. Option B. Solid angle foot orthosis. Option C. Hinged angle foot orthosis. Option D. Longitudinal heart support. And the answer is... Option D. Longitudinal heart support. Explanation to this question is a metatarsal pad, a solid angle foot orthosis and hinged angle foot orthosis will not correct a longitudinal arch. The longitudinal arch support is the only orthopedy given that will address the best blindness. Now let's move to question number 149. A 17-year-old patient is recovering from complete spinal cord injury at the level of L2. The expected outcome in this case is most likely include Option A. A spastic or reflex bladder Option B. Greater loss of arm function than the lung function with early loss of pain and temperature sensation Option C. Loss of motor function, pain, temperature sensation below the level of lesion with light touch, proprioception and position sense preserved Option B. Some recovery of function since damage is to the Peripheral no roots and the answer is Option B some recovery of function since damage is to the peripheral no roots Explanation to this question is a spinal cord lesion below L1 is codiquine lesion that's injury to the peripheral root and nerves Since some regeneration is possible some recovery in function can be expected a spastic or reflex bladder is associated with upper motor neuron injury. Other choice describes the defect associated with the anterior core syndrome or central core syndrome. Now let's move to question number 150. A 25-year-old woman is referred to physical therapist by an orthopedist because of the low back pain. The therapist is performing an ultrasound at the L3 level of the posterior back when the patient suddenly informs the therapist she is looking forward to having her third child. On further investigation, the therapist discovers that the patient is in the first trimester of the pregnancy. Which of the following is the best course of action for the therapist? 
Option A, change the settings of the ultrasound from continuous to be pulsed. Option B, continue with the continuous setting because the first trimester of pregnancy is not a contraindication. Option C, cease the treatment, notify patients of the pedic position and document the mistake. Option D, send the patient to the gynecologist for an immediate sonogram. And the answer is... Option C, cease the treatment and notify the patient's orthopedic physician and document the mistake. Explanation to this question is, the therapist should notify the referring physician. The mistake should be documented and the patient informed. The referring physician can determine the need for a consultation with him or her or an obstetrician. So that's all for today. If you have any doubts, please mention in the comment box. For further learning, keep in touch with the channel. See you in the next part. That's part 31. Bye bye. See you. Thank you for watching.